Tracking all of your blogs, videos, and other content can be difficult. Task management apps are often aimed at generalized projects and to-do lists, and they're not well suited for the needs of content creators. What you really need is something that you can customize to your own purposes. That's why I'm going to show you how you can manage your content pipeline with a custom system in Airtable. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use low-code tools like Airtable to help companies organize their data and optimize their processes. To learn more about X-Ray services and see how we can help you set up an Airtable base for your company, just go to our website, xray.tech. To see more tips and tutorials about workflow design every single week, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to turn on those notifications too. In this video, I'll show you an example of how you could set up a content management base in Airtable. I'll show you some fields and views that you can use to organize your data, and I'll demonstrate some forms, interfaces, and automations that can help you streamline your work for you and your team. In the resources board linked in the description below, you'll find a link where you can access and copy our template base. Now, it's just a starting point. In this video, what I really wanna do is give you an idea of the endless possibilities Airtable offers for customization. So let's jump into it and explore how you can manage your content creation with Airtable. First, let's take a look at the basic setup of the base. The exact configuration that works best for you will depend on your own specific circumstances, but I wanna quickly highlight some of the key field types that you'll probably want to consider. To get started, you can copy our example base that I have open right now. Again, you can find this base in the resources board linked in the description of this video. In that same resources board, you can also find some helpful related tutorials like our Airtable beginner's guide. If you're brand new to Airtable, that will show you everything you need to know to start using the app. Now let's jump back to our base. Naturally, you're going to use several text fields for basic info about each piece of content, like the title, description, or SEO terms. You'll also want to use date fields to track things like the publishing date of each piece or the recording date. Airtable also offers single and multi-select fields, which can be great for logging status, descriptive tags, content type, and more. These are all pretty self-explanatory fields, and you can just choose whichever field type suits your data best. But there are a couple of especially important field types that I want to cover in a little more detail. These are the attachment fields and linked record fields. Attachment fields allow you to upload a file and store it in your Airtable base. Your exact limit varies based on your subscription level, but at any tier, you'll have plenty of space to store lots of text and images. So you can upload articles from a Word doc, thumbnail images for a video, supporting illustrations for a blog, and other similar assets with ease. To accommodate regular video uploads, you probably need either a business or enterprise plan. But if you're on a lower tier, you can always just use a URL field to link to your large files in Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, or any other cloud storage provider. However you choose to use attachment fields, they can be an extremely convenient way to include your assets right alongside their associated content. Another great tool for connecting your data together in Airtable is the ability to link records. Linked records let you associate a record in one table with a record in another through a special field type. They can be a great way to track separate but related data, and they are one of the reasons that Airtable is so popular among large and growing teams. For instance, you might want to associate each piece of content with a related task. In the same base, you could have one table for your content and another for your tasks. Then, in this linked record, you can simply associate each task with the relevant piece of content. By including a lookup field, like this one here, you can automatically pull data in from the other table. So for example, we can see that this task is associated with the Airtable AI tutorial video, which is scheduled to be published on February 12th. And if we change the publish date of the content to the next week, we can see that the update is immediately reflected in our linked record. Linked records and lookups like this are a convenient way to surface the same information in multiple tables without redundant data entry. There's one more field I wanna highlight before we move on to custom views. This is a field type and a technique that can also help you save time on edits. With a formula field, you can populate a field with the output of any function that you enter. The options are pretty much endless, but one very simple formula is to concatenate the contents of various fields in your table along with additional text. We always like to use formula fields as the primary field in our bases here at X-Ray. 
and we always recommend new Airtable users do the same. This lets you easily keep naming conventions consistent and update those conventions when needed. Right now, this field combines the title and the publishing date of each piece of content, but we can easily change it to show the content type instead. The formula immediately updates for every field. With formulas, linked records, attachments, and a whole host of other field types, you can set up your content base to track any attributes you want. With all of your fields set up, the next step is to apply filters and create unique views to easily surface critical or time-sensitive data. For instance, you might want to apply a filter to show only content that's incomplete. Our filter in this view is set up to display any content not marked as published or ready to publish. That way, we can easily see what still needs to be worked on. Alternatively, you may want to set up a view that only shows videos scheduled to be published in the next two weeks, or a view that displays any videos missing a thumbnail in the thumbnail attachment field. Note that the condition here specifies video as the content type and looks for records with an empty thumbnail field. You can combine any number of conditions that you want about any fields in your table. It's entirely up to you. One quick tip when you want to experiment with filters, add a new view first. That way, you can preserve all of the views that you currently have and keep their settings intact. Also, make sure that you always keep an All Records view that contains your entire dataset with no filters applied. Additionally, defining a view as Editable or Edit Me makes it clear that it's safe to change the filters, groups, or fields that are shown. This kind of clarity can be essential when you're collaborating with your team. But views aren't just for adding and saving filters to a spreadsheet. You can also break away from the standard grid view and use other options for a more dynamic arrangement. For instance, you might want to use a calendar to see your posting schedule and line it up with other important events and milestones. You could also use a gallery to easily identify each piece by its unique thumbnail or hero image. And you could use a Kanban board to easily view and update tasks. Basically, with filters and views, you can create a setup that suits any task or process that you need to perform. When it comes to filters and views, there's a lot to explore. We've added a few to our example base to give you a sense of what you can do, but you can also find more information in our Airtable Beginner's Guide, linked in the resources board in the description. The field types, filters, and views we've covered so far in this video are all helpful for organizing your data. Next, let's take a look at how you can share your data and collaborate with colleagues, partners, and anyone else on the web. Your main tools for collaboration in Airtable will be forms and interfaces. Airtable forms are created with the form view type. It converts each field in a table into a question in a survey. Then you can customize the survey by removing or adding fields and changing the labels in question text. Anyone with access to the form URL can fill it out to submit data, even if they don't have direct access to the Airtable base. This can be a great way to let your team contribute even if they're not going to use Airtable enough to justify adding a new seat to your plan. For instance, you might want to use a form to gather content ideas from anyone on your team. However, forms only offer a single way for users to interact with your data. All they can do is submit a survey, which will in turn create a new record. If you want to allow more extensive options like viewing data and updating records, then you'll want to check out interfaces. Interfaces allow you to create custom layouts containing configurable views of your data. Permissions for interfaces can be controlled separately from the permissions for the base itself. This means that you can grant users on your team access to an interface without granting them access to edit the base itself. So they will be restricted to the interface that you designed for them without the ability to edit that interface's components and they won't have access to the data tab where we configured those views earlier in this video. There are tons of options for setting up an interface, and we cover all the basics in part two of our Airtable Beginner's Guide. But you can basically customize your interfaces to display only the data, reports, and actions that are relevant to a certain user or role. For instance, you might want a graphic designer to only view their tasks in a Kanban board and upload files to a thumbnail field. 
In this interface, we've added a Kanban board component and a grid view component that only includes the thumbnail attachment field and a few other key pieces of information. Now we can just share a link to this interface with our designer, and they'll only see the information that they need. They won't be overwhelmed with dozens of irrelevant records and fields. With an interface, you can design a specific way for each team member to work and quickly fulfill their assigned tasks. With forms and interfaces, you can give your collaborators careful access to a specific, curated part of your content management base and keep the rest private. So we've covered data organization and sharing so far. Let's wrap things up by taking a look at how you can make Airtable do a lot of your work for you. With Airtable automation, you can remove tedious tasks from your workflow and make your outputs more consistent. Airtable automations can connect with several popular apps like Google Docs and Sheets, Jira, Asana, Slack, Salesforce, and more. For example, you can use Airtable automations to create new records in your Airtable bases or push information to the apps we just mentioned. This automation runs whenever a new record is added to the blogs view. That view has a filter so only records with the blog type are shown. View-based triggers are an easy way to control automations, but we did a full rundown of Airtable automation triggers in another video if you'd like to understand each available option. Next, the automation creates a placeholder document from a template we've configured in this step. The document name and other info come from the data in the Airtable record that triggered this automation. Being able to pull data from your Airtable record and put it into other apps is a big part of what makes automations so useful. Next, our automation creates a new task in the tasks table of our content base. This will be a templated task that simply asks the user to create a rough draft of the blog. Once again, several key pieces of information are filled in using data from the Airtable record, such as the blog's name and publishing date. Finally, the automation sends a Slack alert to let us know that the task and the placeholder doc are ready. The links are dynamically pulled from the previous steps in the automation, so they'll always point to the right task and doc. Let's see the full automation in action. I'll add a record and set the type to blog so that it enters the blog view and triggers the automation to run. After a few seconds, I get a Slack message with a link. I'll click on it. And when I open up the doc, I see that all of the information is correct. This is just an example of the kinds of tasks and actions you might want to automate with Airtable. Try automating any task that always has to happen when you create a new piece of content or when you publish it. For instance, you might want to have an automation that creates a new task to review any newly added content, or an automation that sends newly published posts to Hootsuite. As we noted, you can automate many tasks in several popular apps with Airtable, although its native integrations are pretty limited. If Airtable doesn't support the app that you're looking for, you can always turn to dedicated automation providers like Zapier, Make, or Microsoft Power Automate. Remember, Airtable is a database first and foremost, and it works well with any no-code automation provider or several at once. This means you can use any automation provider that you'd like along with Airtable to easily automate additional tasks. Whether you want to stick with native Airtable automations or use an automation provider to extend Airtable's capabilities, organizing your data in Airtable is a crucial first step to automating your work. Tracking and managing your content can be difficult, but Airtable makes it easy to follow your progress, store images, run relevant automations, and share your work with collaborators. Try setting up your own Airtable base for your content today. I promise it will make your whole process easier and more efficient in no time. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human. Like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation, and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. 
Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.